Hi students, now we shall learn lesson number 20, Breeding and Biotechnology. What are we going to learn in this lesson? We are going to define and discuss the steps and methods involved in the plant breeding. We will know different varieties of crops produced by crop improvement. We will understand what is animal breeding and its application. We will also differentiate between inbreeding and outbreeding. We are going to learn what is hybrid vigor and its importance. We will identify the steps involved in genetic engineering and understand the practical applications of DNA fingerprinting. We are going to gain knowledge on gene therapy and know the importance of stem cell technology. India's population is increasing at a high rate. We need to supply food for the growing population. The food demand is increasing day by day. Having very small agricultural land area, we need to supply food for all the people. How to solve this problem? This can be made possible by plant breeding and animal husbandry. What do you mean by plant breeding? Plant breeding is the art of developing economically important plants with superior quality. So what are the superior quality? It should give the high yield in very short time it should give the yield and it must be the plant must be disease resistant pest resistant it must be adopted to grow in any climatic condition so this plant breeding is possible through biotechnology and it is the art of developing economically important plants with superior quality similarly animal husbandry involves breeding of the animals breeding of many animals their, their multiplication rate must be increased because of that we can get more amount of food, more amount of meat, more amount of milk products, etc. Biotechnology also helps to develop advanced health healthcare products, diagnostic kits for the diseases, food production, etc. to improve the quality of human life. Now let us see about the agriculture. The modern agricultural practices and the crop improvement, this we have learned in standard 8th itself. And this include preparation of the soil, sowing, application of the manures and fertilizers, proper irrigation, protection from the weeds, pest harvesting, threshing and storage. The aim of this crop improvement is to develop better varieties which could give us higher yield and better quality of food. So what is green revolution? Green revolution is the process of increasing the food production. So if you are able to increase the food production through certain high yielding crop varieties, then it is called as green revolution. Modern agricultural techniques are adopted in the underdeveloped and developing nations to get the better yield, to get the higher yield. Dr. Norman Borlang who is an American agronomist. He is considered as the father of green revolution. He has done a lot of improvement in the field of agriculture and he has received the Nobel Prize in 1970. In the same way, Dr. M. S. Swaminathan in India, he too joined with Dr. Borland in bringing green revolution by introducing certain Mexican varieties of wheat in India. Breeding for high yield and better quality. Efforts have been taken to develop high yielding varieties of crops and this only led to the green revolution. They have developed certain semi dwarf varieties in wheat and rice. What do you mean by this dwarf? Dwarf means short plants. Normally the cereal or the grains yielding plant must be shorter then only it is desirable and we can collect the grains in an easy way. Sonalika and Kalyan Sona, they are the semi daff varieties of wheat and they gave high yielding, they are fertilizer responsive wheat varieties from Mexico. Similarly, IR8 which is considered as a miracle rice, 
It is a high yielding semi daf variety which was developed by International Rice Institute IRRI Philippines. In 1966, this IR8 was introduced in India and Philippines first, and this is considered as the hybrid which was giving high yield of rice. IR8 is a hybrid variety obtained from the cross between Pita from Indonesia and DGO Ojen, a DAF variety of rice from China. So, crossing these two varieties, we were able to get IR8, which is a superior quality rice. Who is this? Dr. M. S. Swaminathan, Man Kumbu Sambasivam Swaminathan. He is an Indian scientist. and he is known for his leading role in india's green revolution so he has done many researches on potato wheat rice and jute plant by doing plant breeding experiments because of his effort the wheat production has increased from 12 million tons to 70 million tons now and so he is aptly called as the father of indian green revolution and who is this nammalwar He is a Tamil agricultural scientist and environmentalist, and he has founded Nammalwar Ecological Foundation from Farm Research and Global Food Security Trust, and he has given the awareness about. He has created the awareness about the benefits of organic farming. Means avoiding the synthetic fertilizer, artificial fertilizer, insecticide, and pesticide, and using organic material for farming. Plant breeding for disease resistance. So all the plants are attacked by pathogens like viruses, bacteria, and fungi. So when they attack the plants, automatically they cannot grow well and they cannot give good yield. And this must be prevented. so how to prevent this we will use certain fungicide bacteriocytes which are of chemical origin and these chemical will pollute the soil and the plants environment so because of that we will not be getting better yield for the next seasons onwards so we have to protect prevent this we have to check this how to check by creating disease resisting varieties of plants and this can be done by the biotechnology so this is resistant varieties can be developed by plant breeding technology in biotechnology and there are certain disease resistant varieties are listed in your book so wheat variety name is called himgiri so this is resistant to leaf and stipe rust and hill bunt disease cauliflower the variety name is pusa subra pusa snowball k1 and they both are resistant to the disease called black rot cowpea so pusa komal and this is resistant to the bacterial blight disease like that many varieties of plants which are resistant to the diseases are developed by plant breeding technology so plant breeding for insect and pest resistant in addition to microorganism number of pest and in insect also cause damage to the crops so the plant must be resistant to all this pest and the insects and they developed this kind of plants through the plant breeding there are certain plants which are listed here which are developed from the plant breeding the insect pest resistant varieties brassica so brassica is nothing but the mutacus a variety called as pusa gaurav and it is resistant to aphids flat beans that type pair they say pusa sem 2 and pusa sem 3 they are resistant to leaf hopper aphids and fruit borers ladies finger you know pusa savani pusa a4 they are resistant to shoot and fruit borers similarly plant breeding is done for improved nutritional quality so the main problem in india's population is under nutrition and protein malnutrition to overcome this major health problem in the human population scientists have developed improved nutritional quality in the plants through plant breeding so the quality and the quantity of the nutrition nutrients which are present in the grains and the in the food crops determine the nutritional quality of the particular plant 
so they have improved in many aspect they with respect to the protein content and the quality of the protein present in the grains the oil content of the oil seeds as well as the mineral content of the food grains we can determine the quality nutritional quality of the food biofortification the so biofortification is a scientific process by which we can develop the crops which are enriched with desirable nutrients like vitamins proteins and minerals and they have done it by even the gene modification there are certain varieties which are developed by biofortification are proteina shakti ratna they are lysine rich maize hybrids what is this lysine it is an amino acid so which is a component of protein so amino acids combine to form the proteins so these maize hybrids will are very rich in lysine and it is developed in india similarly a variety of wheat which is called as atlas 66 which is a protein rich variety an iron rich fortified rice variety that is also developed by plant breeding vitamin a enriched carrot pumpkins and spinach are also developed by the plant breeding so methods of plant breeding for crop improvement so we have seen what are the food crops which are developed through plant breeding now what are the methods of plant breeding to develop high yielding varieties introduction of the new variety of plants second one selection thirdly polyploid breeding fourthly mutation breeding fifth one hybridization we shall see one by one first is introduction of the new plant varieties this is the process of introducing a foreign species of plant to a new region so it it is uh, by introducing a high yielding variety of plants from one place to another the plant varieties which are shifted from high yielding varieties of plants when they are shifted from one place to another we call it as exotic species and these imported plant species may also sometimes carry pathogens and pest and we must be very much careful while transferring these plants from one place to another so by testing and quarantining this plants only we have to introduce into the new field pasiolus munga is nothing but ulundu this was introduced in Ch india from china next method of plant breeding is selection so selection is one of the oldest method of plant breeding and here all the plants will be grown mixedly in as a mixed population in a field and from that uh, whichever is whichever plant is having uh, morphologically best characters uh, so morphological means external appearance uh, whichever plant is processing morphologically best characters they will be chosen uh, the seeds from these plants will be collected and they will be grown for producing the next generation so like this they will be doing for many generation to get a pure breeding variety of good quality plants so methods of selection this uh, selection is again classified into three mass selection pure line selection clonal selection so the mass selection in a mixed population they will collect the desirable characters having plants and uh, seeds from these are allowed to raise the next second generation and this process is carried out for uh, like this uh, seven to eight generations at the end they will be collecting all the seeds from the last generation and they will be distributed to the farmers for the cultivation and this is what is called mass selection and uh, there are some example for this the selection of the groundnut varieties like tmv2 and ak10 so this is the schematic representation of the mass selection here you can see the mixed population from which the red spot plants alone are collected and they are planted the next generation of plant is raised in that we could see some other type of plant from this also we have to choose the particular characteristic feature plant and that is again used for the seeds are collected and it is uh, again used for raising the next generation like that seven to eight generation we have to raise then only we can get all the plants with the similar characteristic features and this is how they do the mass selection next is called as pure line selection in pure line selection the plants are selected from the self pollinated crops and they will be planted and harvested independently the individual plant progenies from them will be collected separately and they will be evaluated separately the best ones must will be released as the pure line variety and they will be genotypically as well as phenotypically similar 
uh, genotypically means the genes constitution also will be similar to each other they, they'll all be similar in gene, genes as well as the morphological features that is phenotypically next we have clonal selection large number of plants will be developed from by the vegetative reproduction from a single plant and out of this um, many number of plants they will select the best ones and they are called as clones so clones will be having the similar character they will have the similar phenotype as well as genotype the selection of the desirable clones from the mixed population of a vegetatively propagated crop is called as clonal selection what is meant by clonal selection the selection of the desirable clones from the mixed population of vegetatively propagated crops is called as clonal selection. So next we have the polyploid breeding. So what do you mean by polyploid? Before that we must know what is haploid and diploid. So all the organism will have two complete set of chromosomes in their somatic cells and this we call as diploid or 2N. And um, the gametic cells or the gametes, the sperm and the ovum will have only one set of chromosomes because it will undergo meiosis reduction division by which it produces the applied number of chromosomes in their cells and they are called as gametic cells. So if an organism is having more than two sets of chromosomes in their somatic cells, then th this condition is called as polyploidy. And uh, this can be uh, produced, this can be done by inducing through physical agents such as heat or cold treatment or by treating with the x-rays or chemicals by treating the cells with the chemical agents like colchicine, we can develop polyploid individuals who will have more sets of more than two sets of chromosomes. So achievements of polyploid breeding. Through a polyploid breeding, we are able to get seedless watermelons, which is having 3n number of chromosomes, and bananas 3n number of chromosomes. They will not be having seeds in them. And TB29, which is a triploid variety of T, and these T plants will have larger shoot, and they'll be able to grow even in the dry seasons. Triticale, third one is triticale estimum, that is 6n number of chromosomes, which is a hybrid of wheat and rye. So wheat you know and rye is uh, pearl millet or uh, kambu we say. So hybrid variety of these two they have uh, developed a plant which is called a triticale that is 6N. To make this plant fertile the polyploid is introduced and by which they are able to get the seeds from them and they are um, seems to contain more amount of uh, dietary fibers and more amount of proteins in them. The next example is Raffano brassica. So it is a hybrid of um, radish and cabbage. So it is a allo tetraploid. This is also obtained by colchicine treatment. Next we are going to learn mutation breeding. Mutation is defined as a sudden heritable change in the genes. Genes are the nucleotide sequence of DNA in an organism. If there is a change in the genes, then the characteristic features also vary. So, mutation causes genetic variation in the living organism. So, the organism which undergoes this mutation is called as mutant. And the factors which are responsible for causing this mutation in the organisms are called as mutagens or mutagenic agents. There are two types of mutagenic agents or mutagens. They are physical and chemical mutagens. Physical mutagens include radiations like X-rays, alpha, beta, gamma rays, UV rays, temperature, etc. So they induce mutation in the living organism. So they are called physical mutagens. The chemical mutagens include chemical substances like mustard gas and nitrous oxide. So using these chemicals, we can induce the mutation in the crops for crop improvement. And this is what is called as mutation breeding. Gamma rays from cobalt-60 and GCM-177 are used to induce the desirable mutation in the crop plants. What are the achievements of mutation breeding? First one, Sarbati Sonora, which is a wheat produced from Sonora-64 by using the gamma rays. Similarly, uh, Atomita 2 rice. This rice is able to grow even in the salt water, salty soil because it is saline tolerance and it is pest resistant variety which is produced out of mutation. Similarly, groundnuts with thick shells are also produced out of mutation breeding. 
Next is hybridization. Hybridization may be defined as the process of crossing two or more types of plants for bringing their desirable characters together into one progeny and that progeny is called as hybrid. So hybrid is superior in one or more characters to both the parents. So hybridization is a common method in cre creating genetic variation also. So genetic variation, the individual which is produced out of the hybridization that is a hybrid will have improved characteristic features when we compare to both of their parents from which it is got. So hybridization experiment, one example is given here that is triticale which is considered as the first man-made cereal. So triticale is a hybrid which is obtained from triticum diurum which is a wheat and rye sequel cereal that is the kambu or the millet grain. Diurum, the wheat plant is having 2n number is 28. So, 28 number of chromosomes are present in the wheat as well as kale cereal is having 14 number of chromosomes are present. So, their N will be 14 and 7 respectively. So, when fusion of this two nucleus take place, it produces a hybrid which is a sterile which is having the 2N number 21. This plant is again, it is treated with the chemical called colchicine to become exaploid triticale that is 2N21 will be doubled and 2N will become 42. Because of that it, it can become fertile and can produce a seed, viable seeds. So the two main aspects of this hybridization is to combine the characters of both the plants in one plant and to utilize the hybrid vigor. So this plant which is uh, coming out of this hybridization will have a better desirable qualities selected from both the plants, both the parent plant. Next we have the animal breeding. What is breed you must know. What is a breed? A breed is a group of animal of common origin with same, within the same species. A breed is a group of animals of common origin. So all the animals would have come from the same origin or same species. Similarly, what is breeding? Breeding involves mating of the parents of different varieties. Breeding involves mating of the parents of different varieties to have the desirable traits from both of the parents in the offspring. What are the objectives of animal breeding? So animal breeding aims for improving the genotype of the domesticated animals by which we can get better yield and good desirable qualities to produce better milk, egg and meat. When breeding takes place between the animals of the same breed, then it is called inbreeding. And if the breeding takes place between two different breeds, then it is called as outbreeding. Now inbreeding. So inbreeding is nothing but the mating of the closely related animals within the same breed. This helps in the accumulation of superior genes and the elimination of the genes which are undesirable from the offspring. Hissardale is the name of the sheep which is got by inbreeding technique which is developed by crossing bicarnary females of Punjab with Australian merino males. Eves uh, means female and uh, rams means male. Inbreeding depressions. If you continue to do this inbreeding in a organism for many generation, it will reduce the fertility and productivity. Because inbreeding exposes harmful recessive genes that are eliminated by the selection. What is outbreeding? It is a breeding of unrelated animals. And so the offsprings formed are called as hybrids. So hybrids will be stronger and vigorous than their parents. And they are of economic value also. So, to get it, they will cross the uh, two different species with the uh, desirable features of economic value. So, one, one such is given in your book that is male donkeys are crossed with the female horse. The resulting organism is called as mule. So, mule is superior to horse as well as to the donkey in strength, intelligence, ability to work and resistant to the disease etc but they are sterile they are sterile means they will not be able to produce the offsprings the next generation cannot be produced by them this is a picture showing the cross between the horse and the donkey to get the mule this is the uh, picture of a mule with the superior uh, characters of both horse and the donkey so another hybrid is given here information in the information bit that is white leg on when crossed with Plymouth rock fowls. So you will get a hybrid fowl which will yield more number of eggs. Similarly, cross beads of cows 
So here brown Swiss cow is crossed with Sahiwal. By crossing them, th they are able to get the young one which is called current Swiss which can yield uh, two to three times more milk than the indigenous cow. So what is heterosis? Heterosis is nothing but the superiority of the hybrid. The young ones which are produced through hybridization, through outbreeding, will be having superior features, qualities than their parents. And it is called as the hybrid vigor or heterosis. The effects of hybrid vigor in animal breeding. First one increased milk production by the cattle. Secondly, increased production of eggs by the poultry. High quality of meat can be got. Increased growth rate is reported in the domesticated animals.